And I'm going to take this opportunity to give you a sneak preview of a major new feature coming to our SDR Uno SDR software. But first, I'd like to go through a quick review of the uh, existing features within SDR Uno for those of you that may not be intimately familiar with it. Over the last couple of years, uh, many different features have been added to SDR Uno to make it more useful. Obviously, we've added support for all the RSPs as they've uh, come into production. Uh, we have features like calibrated power measurement, which is uh, unique to my knowledge within SDR software. We have the ability to create memory banks, as many as you like, for uh, easy recall of particular frequencies of interest. Uh, the scanner was a big one for us developed primarily for things such as scanning the airband, it's turned out to be incredibly useful on other frequency ranges as well. Uh, we've had the ability to log power and signal to noise uh, values, uh, which is nice for some unattended recording. We added the ability to take the IQ output from the software, which is great for interfacing to other pieces of third-party software, for example, CW Skimmer. Um, workspaces and profiles, have allowed you to customize uh, how your uh, layout for the software looks and uh, what sort of frequencies and ranges are displayed. We've always had multiple VRXs up to 16, which means you could listen to one virtual receiver and use other virtual receivers to output to third-party decoder software, for example. And uh, we've had a recording function for some time, which records the entire IQ spectrum that the receiver is recording. And then most recently, we added an exciting new capability in the form of plugins. And uh, that's significant because for the first time, it allows third party developers easy access to SDR Uno to add on additional capabilities. In fact, since it's relevant to what I'm going to cover later, uh, I'd just like to give you a brief demonstration now of one of the plugins called the uh, DX Cluster plugin. The DX Cluster plugin is one of several plugins that use annotation features on the main spectrum display. In the case of DX Cluster, what you do is you log into different uh, cluster servers and uh, it will identify particular contacts that have been recently in use and it will identify them with the small labels you see on the display. I'm sorry it's not super clear for you to see, but hopefully that will encourage you to get SDR Uno and try it out. Um, other annotation programs include FRAN for Frequency Annotator, which tends to call upon large databases of common broadcast stations and uh, is very useful for the uh, shortwave listeners, for example. Uh, it's also one of uh, several different capabilities you can get uh, using the plugin system. Other plugins can be used for decoding uh, DAB broadcasts uh, in Europe in particular, and uh, for using uh, contour shuttle control wheels with the software. Uh, there's also a simple audio recorder. So many different capabilities are open and uh, we hope that the plugin library will continue to expand over time. If you open up the recording panel in the existing software, the small window you see in the lower left labeled uh, recorder will open up and it has basic transport controls in there, allowing you to play back previously recorded WAV files, or you can use the record button and make a recording of currently received signals. Now, this is not a simple audio recorder. It actually records the entire IQ data stream. So anything you see in the main spectrum window will be recorded. And during playback, you can tune through that spectrum as if you were listening in real time. Now, if you're not there and you want to record something later on, if you open the uh, scheduler uh, window on the right, you have the ability to put a start and end time and date. Uh, unfortunately, you can only do that for one event. And the big feature we're about to demonstrate is the new scheduler function about to appear in SDR Uno. So let's take the new scheduler for a spin. Uh, let me get my face off the screen so you can see as much of it as possible and let's see what it can do for us. The button that used to be labeled recording panel is now called scheduler. When we click on it you can see the new scheduler window opens and you'll see I've already added numerous events. In addition at the bottom you see the transport controls that mimic what we had in the old recorder before. 
and they can still be used in much the same way. For example, if I want to record the visible spectrum we see there right now, I can click on the record button and a recording will start. We can just uh, allow that to record for a few seconds, uh, stop the recording, and then we can go and play it back. So if we go to the uh, options button, select a WAV file as our input, it will open up a file requester and we can scroll down and find the file that we just recorded. So we can open up the file, click on play, and you see the spectrum is played back just as if we were looking at it live and we can tune through the band just as we would normally. But enough of that, let's look at some of the new features. So we'll go back to the RSP as our source. You'll see I previously added a number of different events. Let's see how that's done. So start off by clicking Add Event. In the window that opens, you have numerous choices. You can specify the start and end times for an event, or indeed the duration, and you can select a particular date for that event to run. In the lower half of the window, we can specify a particular VFO frequency we want to use, and then the type of action we want to occur. We can either play, we can make an IQ recording, or we can initiate a scan. Then at the bottom of the window, we have the ability to select a profile. Now what a profile is, is a collection of radio parameters. It may include the state of the broadcast band filters, the gain function, the operating mode, and very commonly used with third-party software, where you might want to specify that the VRX output goes to a virtual audio cable rather than the speakers on your system. So basically what you want to do is set up all the parameters uh, for a particular configuration, and then you can save those as a profile, which can then be instantly recalled later. So once you've selected the necessary mode and all the other parameters of interest, noise reduction is one of the things that can be specified, uh, we can do a right click over in the memory panel in the lower half and we can store that profile. And we'll just call it uh, profile two, just for convenience. So now we can go back to the uh, scheduler window and we can select the profile we need from the bottom drop down. And what this means is when an event fires off, it will restore all those radio settings to our desired values quickly and easily. So now we can click on the OK button and you'll see we have a new event added to the bottom of the list of events showing up in the scheduler. Very powerful. Now at the risk of sounding like one of those TV adverts, but wait, there's more. You'll notice in the lower right hand side, there is a list of the plugins we have installed in our system. For example, the DX cluster plugin we demonstrated earlier. So when you're creating an event, in addition to causing the radio to start playing, you can also open up any of the plugins you have installed. A very powerful feature, although it will depend on some of the plugin authors adding the capability to auto run when their plugins are opened. Not only can you set up multiple events in the scheduler, you can also create recurring events. So an event, rather than just running once, can also be set to run daily, or every other day, for example, or weekly, or every couple of weeks, for example, or indeed on a particular day of the month. That gives you enormous flexibility and saves you a lot of programming time down the road. Now, before I go, let me show you one particular use case we think will be very popular. Many people like to try and identify broadcast stations by listening at the top of the hour. So if we set a start time, say five minutes before, and an end time five minutes after, and then the function we pick is IQ record, we can set the scheduler to go and record the entire spectrum over that time window at the top of the hour. We can then come back later and we can play back that recording. We can tune through the band and see how many of the stations there we can ID successfully. That's probably the most often requested capability and we're delighted to finally bring that functionality to you. So that's a quick tour around the new scheduler function coming in SDR Uno. Um, I've had a lot of fun playing with it and I look forward to playing with it some more and I think you'll like to get your hands on it as well.